Good morning, everybody. Uh, on the Block podcast is back. Brandon Graham, Igor Henriquez, I'm Joe Fafari. September 7th, boys, it's week one. Everybody's a little excited, got a little hop of the step. Um, Brandon, let's go to you first. Quickly, just talk about last game, the Thursday night game, and we'll get into our picks. Yeah, that Thursday night game was 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 electric, of course. It's, it's just a great, like, NFL was really cooking with their schedule coming out with uh, Thursday and the Friday. Uh, never have a game in Brazil again, that's one thing I'll say. But uh, the Ravens and Chiefs came that, it was just electric from, from the start. Once again, the Bills have given Patrick Mahomes in a trade and well, for the draft picks and Xavier Worthy from Texas to the Chiefs to Andy Reid, this mad, this mad scientist. And they've just cooked it up another concoction to for another Super Bowl, right? And Peter Schrager, who's been five for five in the last Super Bowl picks he's made, said that wow. the Chiefs will be winning again. Um, yeah, five for five. So he said the Chiefs will be winning again. And honestly, he's just like, hey, you give these guys some weapons and they go out there and they cook. And Lamar just need, you already gave the script for the entire year. He's going to run around. He's lost weight. He's going to be running around. They need an identity on offense. They don't have an identity uh, at all it's just it's just panicking throw the ball so i um, he's in my fantasy team i bet him a lot but at the same time i really want to make sure that well, I, I really hope that the ravens fix it offensively igor i mean uh, for the thursday game uh a couple of takeaways i took, took off of it is that the ravens really you know they they brought in derrick henry they got lamar that offensive line took a lot of hits and then they didn't look like they could really protect him and then the other one I took away, minus that, I think Isaiah, Isaiah likely had a great game. Uh, Mark Andrews was a bit of a, of a ghost. But I thought the refing was terrible. Um, the whole uh, illegal formations, I, I mean, they were calling pretty much. And then they're now, now they're allowing defensive coordinators to call timeouts, which is illegal. That should have been a penalty on Spagnola. And if they're going to allow that uh, game one, um, the circus. it's going to be a circus all season. So I think the officiating need, needs a little bit of, um, you know, to be looked at. I heard yesterday, like, you know, people were comparing you all, you know, should they do like the NBA with their, you know, last two minute reports, but literally, and it is true. Like you could probably call a hold or something on every single. Every, yeah, every, every time. Time. Yeah. But like to me there, they're, again, they're picking and choosing their spots and, and it is t- sort of ruining the game. So um, I thought it was a great game. And again, that slight toe thing near the end, that could have been a tie game. Um, but like I said, I mean, to me, the takeaway is, are the Ravens going to have enough on the offensive line to allow Henry to thrive and to be able to protect Lamar Jackson? So the Chiefs are, are what they are. Kelsey didn't do much, but like they're going to save him for the postseason. You know, he's, he's 35 years old. Um, they were trash talking his haircut. <laughs> you, were you were too. You were too. But like I said, it was a great game. And like I said, it was to me, I didn't have a problem with the Friday one because I kind of liked it last night because. Friday night games, maybe not in Brazil, but I, I think they hadn't had a Friday game only in like forty years. I kind of, yeah. dug, I kind of dug it because like it was it was something different. I heard this stat that the um, they since the forties, I think that they haven't played a game like on a Friday, and it's due to some kind of like agreement that they had way back. And obviously, Brandon knows about the high school thing. I mean, if high school football is on in the states, and I mean NFL is on, I guess. Well, it's also you got to think of ratings wise, right? Because Friday night's usually the dead zone for things, right? If your if your favorite show gets moved to Friday night, you know it's about to be canceled pretty much, right? So Friday's usually the dead zone for most things, and that's probably why they don't want games because they want ratings, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I was in Texas last week and yeah, coming oh, yeah. last week, but even then they're showing CFL, they're showing high school football, they're showing uh, you know FCS football, which is a lower division. Like they, they, if it's football, they will watch it on any day. And uh, that's that's the biggest thing. And I I don't fear that those they might make it a thing. I think Friday football was amazing. Like that's a day where I can just kick back after work and just watch, rather than you know on a Saturday or on a Sunday when you want. That's the dedicated to against them. Anyways, it, it was it was it was nice. And that game last night, I don't know if you want to get into that, but that game last night was entertaining from the start uh, to the finish. Um, defenses have to really, really figure out what they want to do, of course, from for, especially the Eagles. Oh, my goodness, Jordan Love is picking them apart at some points, and Jalen Hurts. Listen, yeah, I've always, listen, that, I've yeah, always had a problem that. with Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Uh, ever since coming out of Alabama, I knew he was like a mature guy and everything like that, but him coming in, I, even when he first started, right, and he first got in uh, with the Eagles. He always just gets it. I'm a quarterback, so I get the ball. He he goes to the right side. He he, he floods out the right side. He's doesn't he's not he's not creative in the pocket. He gets the gun a little better, but he's the one that's ultimately going to bring them down. He is the weak point. The offensive line's on the weak point. The Ravens have the hardest job as an O line in the entire NFL to protect uh, Lamar Jackson and of course 
make sure that Derek Henry's good. But the offense line for Eagles are no problem. It's just Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is the only, the weakest link right now for that team. Yeah, I was going to say, um, if you guys were on to talk about Hurts a little bit, but you kind of hit the nail on the head there. He was missing some guys. Speaking of missing some guys, Lamar Jackson missed. I think it was uh, Zay in the end zone there that he oh. couldn't hit for yeah, a touchdown, yeah, yeah. too. I heard people complaining about, oh, you know, the focus on line. At the end of the day, it's almost like with time expired in basketball. Like, it's no good. So I don't know if people are upset about that. I'm kind of worried about the Ravens. Like, the Ravens' defense looked all right, but, like, they lost Patrick Queen, too, which I think was a loss. Got into the Steelers. Um but I guess let's get into it. Before we make our picks, um, I wanted to get into stuff new year that I was kind of thinking about. Teams trending in different directions. So based off last year, teams going up, teams going down. Which teams do you think will not be as good as they've been in previous years before? Um, Igor, let's go to you first. Uh, which team do you think might ha- not have as good of a season as they've been having? His his team. Tom Brady's gone. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean that's that's been a which downhill, team? downhill spiral for the uh... – Basically, the the situation for the Patriots. I mean, the Patriots. Yeah, I'm expecting. I'm expecting the Patriots to be fighting for that first overall pick this year. I mean, that's to me. It's a. It was absolutely a smart move. I think May looked look good in the preseason, but um, the offensive line is horrible. Um, so you might as well protect the kid so he doesn't get dis- destroyed out there. Um, so I, I mean, they're not. I mean, I think they've been trending in, in the opposite direction. And on the on a team that's been doing well and going a little bit more downhill. Um, I think the Vikings will take a step back. They were usually like right there in terms of almost making the playoffs, almost there. I think the quarterback play, um, you know, Sam Darnold, I, I don't think that that's going to be much this year. Some people believe that they might surprise folks. I, I don't believe so. Um, and yeah, I think I think the Chargers, I think the Chargers the, without those weapons. Um, the yeah, they lost a lot of guys. Yeah. Lost a lot of guys. I know, the, I know the whole Harbaugh thing might give them a little bit of a rub. Um, I could see them losing double-digit games. Um, so I think those two are the ones that I think are, are heading in the uh, opposite direction. Brandon. Yeah, I'll say like the New Orleans Saints are like the Portland Trailblazers of the uh, the NFL, right? They're just like in the middle, they're just, just treading water, treading water and just staying there. That's one team that I, I hope they do well because I like Chris Olave a lot. I just think that they, they're they going to get into a point where, you know, Derek Carson will leave and then they have to re kind of rejig everything. But uh, the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills, I really want them to do well. Of course, I go to a few games all, you know, every year, of course. Um, Josh Allen's still there. They have Keon Coleman. Uh, Dalton Kincaid's going to take a step this year for sure. They have two uh, tight ends that can do some stuff. Um, but on the defensive side, like they're they're steady, I guess. They're okay on the defensive side. I just don't know that they can. Josh Allen's going to want to go in the Superman mode even more this year. And that's not good for anyone. That's not good for stats. Not good for the Bills at all. They are in a in a, in a position where they're going to be rebuilding. Um, but they're gonna they're not gonna say they're rebuilding, but they're they're gonna they're gonna be rebuilding, retooling or whatever. You want yeah, to retooling essentially, and they'll still try to go for it because the Buffalo Bills fans are ridiculous. But they're right there for the AFC, right? And every single year, uh, the they just haven't been able to get over the hump, and then now they've taken a bigger step down. So I would say the Bills for sure are trending downwards. Bills are on my list too. Would you guys rate the Bills better or worse than the Dolphins at that division? Uh, I, I have the Dolphins being better than the Bills simply because I think again, it's like Brandon was saying, I think the the Dolphins are are trending upwards uh, in terms of what of what they're doing, and the Bills again, it, we don't know what their identity will be with, uh, on offense uh, in terms of I mean, they might turn more into a running team with Cook. Um, I don't like their wide receivers. I think I think Kincaid at tight end is, is quite good, but they don't have any game breakers at a wide receiver at the moment. And the Dolphins got game breakers everywhere. You got, you know, you got uh you got A Chain, you got Tariq Hill, you Mostert. got Waddle. Most um, they're very they're very yeah, dynamic Mostert, yeah. Mostert as well. And I would say that I have them I could even see I could easily see the Dolphins winning the, the division. I, I can see the Dolphins winning the division too, but it, everything changes once the, the cold comes. That's the biggest thing. If they have to go on the road, they have to play in the cold, they are cooked. And that's the thing. I will never, I will, I believe that they can win this division. I, they should win the division, but I still think the Bills might might take the edge there just because they have Josh Allen. They can, they can weather the storm. Dolphins can't weather any storms physically, you know, literally, figuratively, physically at all. And I, I was going to say that Atlanta Falcons, now that, because Kyle Pitts now has a competent quarterback, and Kirk Cousins, they should be good. They play in a dome, man. If they if they can't put it together with Drake London, Bijan, and those weapons they have down there, then it will never happen. And with the new Raheem Morris, new coach down there, they 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 have to improve. And I think that they're going to be trending upwards for sure. Yeah, I agree. I think I think that's that that's their division um, to to have. Basically, I think the Buccaneers 
um, are relying on on Baker to do a, a ton. I think he might regress a little bit. I ha- I definitely have the Falcons winning that winning that division pretty uh, pretty confidently. Which are some of you could never say in the past, right? But uh, yeah, yeah once know, you get the Dolphins, the, the the jury's just out in the Dolphins until they can win the cold. Like you can do all these great things in the in the regular season. They're like the OKC Thunder. Do so many good things in the season when the playoffs come. They're well, not playoffs, gonna... Last year they were so bad. I remember. I, I I don't really recall who they played, but they. I remember the year before too. They had their third string quarterback against the Bills, and they almost yeah. Skylar Thompson. Skylar Thompson. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's he's actually good. not bad. He went to I think Washington State. Could be wrong, but he was he's a good quarterback in college, and then no, sorry, Kent State. He went to Can, Kansas State, and uh, yeah, no. Listen, they have to be able to win in the weather, and if they, they can stroll and get the first seed and not have to travel anywhere. Great, but it, until you know when that December weather comes, when it's January as well too, they are cooked. So until they can show me, I'm not gonna have my high my hopes up for the for the Dolphins at all. No, we'll do before we make our picks, guys. Let's go through every division. I just want everybody to go through who they think is actually gonna win the division. So we will start with the AFC East then. Uh Brandon, who you got? Yeah, a- AFC <laughs> AFC East. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Bills, man. For the Bills okay. division. Bills division. Bills, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. take the Bills. Um, I think that just because they, they do still have Josh Allen, they have Josh Allen, they have, uh, I, I just don't see the, I know Aaron Rodgers is there and yeah. so he can play more than five snaps and get through at least three games. I'm not going to have my, I, I love Aaron Rodgers. Obviously you guys know that, but, uh, yeah, man. I'm, I know Igor. I know Igor really like him too. Yeah, I, I with all the stuff that's happened throughout the years, him going into, you know, all these, he, he's a lot, man. Aaron Rodgers is a lot and it's a really, really odd guy, I would say, but. Throwing the ball, there's no one that's done it better in my than him. There's no Patrick Mahomes all Aaron Rodgers. What do you say? He went with your big I, said, I said Aaron Rodgers being a, uh, a little bit of a weird guy is an understatement. But <laughs> um, look, the fact is that you know if you look at it, I have my I have Miami because I think the Bills will regress a little bit. Um, but the, the Jets are the wild card. Like they, you don't know what you're going to be getting because they have enough talent. Um, you know, with Brees Hall and and Wilson, if Rodgers can just you know, stick to and, and focus and that, that locker room doesn't implode. Um, They could, they could challenge. I, I, I'll give them the man credit. He's a, he's a fantastic well, quarterback. Um, And like I said, he has enough talent around them that they can make something happen. So they, they are the, the, you know, the wild card in that division. I think Miami is maybe a little step ahead, but I could see the jets really going in there, but I'm taking Miami. because I think it's just a safer option. I'm going to go Jets. Um, I think that the Jets, I mean, like their roster, the talent on the roster, they can compete with Miami. Their defense is great. Garrett Wilson, like Brees Hall. They have so many guys there that are just so solid. Um, I, I, I see Rodgers having a pretty decent season. Obviously, last year being, you know, a freak injury in, in week one. But, I mean, as long as they can get competent play and not have Zach Wilson there, I think that they're pretty good to win that division. Brandon, let's go to AFC North. Uh, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincy, Baltimore, one of the tougher ones to call. Who do you have making it out? I, I hate the management for the Bengals. I hate everything about them. I hate their stadium, the practice stadium they have to walk to. I hate everything about that that organization when it comes from the top. But I love the Bengals. I love the, the guys on our team. But I hate everything about their management. I'm not able to pay certain guys. They're so stingy. It's really, it's really sickening when I think about them. But I think the Bengals will win this division. The Bengals have to win this division. If Jamar Chase gets the money he deserves, if T. Higgins gets the money he deserves, they have to win this division. Uh, Baltimore, jury's still out. The defense, uh, I know they did lose Judd Bates. They they lost a few guys, but I think Burrow coming back, you know, with that that Eminem haircut, man, unstoppable, unstoppable. He wore that. I I think what they have, I know Chase Brown's going to be running the ball. They they will regress in the running game, but I think with, with, with Burrow being back, these guys being back, this is the year where they have to get their sleep in my sleepy pick, but I think that they will, they will prevail in this division. Igor. Yeah. I mean, I agree. If, if, if Cincinnati can stay healthy, I think they win the, the division. Um, I think the they have the best quarterback in the, in the division, in my opinion, when he's at, when he's healthy, the whole chase T Higgins. I know I think Higgins is doubtful uh, already for the game against um, the Patriots. Um, and chase just wants to get paid as much as Justin Jefferson. And to me, like, <laughs> I don't know. Again, the NFL is always weird with that guy. Like he's got a two. He's got a two years left on his deal. Yeah. So other guys getting paid, and then he's like, "Well, I, I need that money." Uh, and to me, that, that, that whole that whole situation kind of like throws off team chemistry a little bit. But on on paper, talent wise, they they should win the division because, like I said, I think when I saw that Ravens uh, O line, I think they're gonna have some problems this year. So I'm gonna take Cincy to to win. Um, with the Ravens close by. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Ravens. 
I'm going to go Ravens. I just, I mean, they're, they're as steady as it gets. I want to be really, what I'm interested in is will the Steelers be 500? I feel like they always are. And then with the Browns, the Browns won a lot of games within three points or less last year because their defense might be the best in football. I just want to see if they can do anything on offense with Deshaun being there for the season. Uh, the South, where we got uh, Tennessee Titans, Indy, Houston, with a lot of people, you know, trending Super Bowl pick and uh, and the Jags. Um, I mean, I'll go first. Um Everybody's going to Houston, and I think that Houston probably does have the best team. Uh, Diggs is Diggs is the new guy there. We get to see with Diggs is like being happy for the first time in a long time. Oh, he's always I'm, happy I'm, to start. He's always gonna be mad later. He's right? always happy to start, right? Remember how always like, happy he was to start. Playing every playoff, he wanted the yeah. ball, but I mean, like he wasn't getting open a lot of times. I'm gonna take Houston because I think it's just the pick. One team though, as a dark horse, I think is gonna be pretty solid all season. I think the Colts are gonna come. Anthony Richardson, when he got drafted, I saw the tape. I was like, this guy came out of nowhere. Florida was like a 500 team. What I saw last year, I know he got hurt early. He looked incredible. Um, as long as he can stay on the field, I think the Colts are going to be in every game. Their O line's one of the best ones. Jonathan Taylor's still there. I'm going to go Houston to win, but Indy to be right behind. I think that the Jags are going to be pretty competitive too. I see how that kind of shakes out, but uh, I'll go Houston. Uh, you guys go with the rest. Uh, Brandon. Yeah, I was going to say I, I saw a YouTube video um, of a, an influencer, and he was in a he was in a uh, uh, adult club. And I think Richardson was throwing money with him. So I said, okay, done with the Colts. They're not going to make it. No, he's not focused. <laughs> but, 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 he's the game part of the NFL. He's done. He's done. He's going to be fine for a bit. He'll get injured. And then he's going to go back to throwing money and living his life, which is fine. Perfectly fine. I understand it. Uh, but I really think you guys are, you know, are sleeping on the Titans, man. I like Will Levis a lot. I think Will Levis uh, now with a Calvin really in the fold. Um, the few other receivers that are there, you know, like Kenny Westbrook is going to be uh, a lot better. Sorry, uh, what was I saying there? Tony um, Pollard being there as well. To, to Boyd Tom, Burks was, and uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Burks, yeah, Burks going to take a step. Of course, they have uh, Tajay Spears. Um, they still have D Hop. Like they have guys on offense, right? Um, they still have. I'm pretty sure they have. Yeah, yeah they do. So. I, I think Will Levis has had a cannon arm ever since he was at Penn State and goes to Kentucky and then he gets drafted and then, you know, he starts playing. I thought I, I think the NFL game is perfectly suited towards him. I will not take them. I just think they're going to be a dark horse in this division. All right. I'll take the Houston Texans, obviously, because CJ Stroud. <laughs> oh, H. Wow. Back to reality, the whole, but the Titans got their tires the whole thing a little bit. <laughs> huh? Man set the whole thing up. Just a change is just a change is big right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you, I was even thinking about it. Titans, what's the best case scenario for them this season? A game above 500, do you think? I Yeah, a few games over 500. Man, they're not bad. Their defense is actually steady, too. Like they still It's just in that division, bad. it's going to be so tough. I don't know. That's the only thing. Not, like, this division, it's always been pretty bad. It's been about 10 years pretty bad, but since Peyton left. But, I mean, I just – I think that there's too much – a lot of te – every team in this division is trending upwards, right? Because they were all bad for so long. Yeah, so it's exactly. going to be tough. But I think that it's going to be – yeah, it's going to be a division race. As a Titans fan, though, yeah, like their problem has always been, I guess, scoring. Their defense got better the last few years. And, and they picked up uh, Snead from Kansas City, right? Like one of the yeah, best they got Snead, yeah. The see, so, they got some guys, I mean, man. Yeah, they do. They do. And a new coach, I mean, it did hurt to see um, – trying to blank on the coach there, but uh, mm -hmm. seeing him go. Brable, Brable. Vrabel go sign with uh, Cleveland. I saw as like an advisor, but uh, okay. Uh, Igor, your pick for this division? I mean, I, I like Houston too. I think it's it's crazy when you have I can you can legitimately say that Diggs is the number three wide receiver. That's what I was gonna say. Tank um, and it's uh, crazy, Collins. just crazy dev with Nico Collins. Yeah. I, I like the mix and pick up. I think they're the running game. Though Montgomery was good last year, I think I don't think he you know was a solution going forward. And they're solid on defense and they're well coached. Um, and again, C.J. Stroud is just C.J. Stroud. So I, I have Houston. I don't think I'm making the Super Bowl, but I think they're going to cause a lot of people a lot of problems. So, yeah, I got I mean, Houston winning the division. That defense, too. I was going to say, like, Will Anderson came up to trade up to get him, and, like, he's been incredible, too. They've, I mean, when they made that trade, um, I'm, I, I, again, I always forget the names, but they traded for that uh, offensive tackle from Miami, and they gave up picks galore. Tunsil. They were uh, Jeremy yes, Tunsil. yes, Tunsil. And they were left with nothing. Like mm -hmm. they got slaughtered in that in that draft. They were they had nothing going forward. They had the coach who traded Hopkins a few years back. You guys remember they got nothing for him. They look like one of the bottom dwellers of the league for a long time. And I mean, th their rise has been pretty crazy considering that they had not much assets. And I remember Brandon, we did the show last year after week one. Um the quarterback did not look good at all. I mean, we talked about another Ohio State bust. He did not look good. And I mean, it was one or two games. I remember we had the conversation. There's the recording. And obviously, he went on, uh, you know, a Terror. historic run. Terror. I think he threw for the most passing yards ever by a rookie. Terror. So, I, he did not yeah, look like a rookie after that game. Terror. 
And yeah, he, needed, yeah. he, needed, he needed to hear from your, your, he, your did, he needed to hear from on the block, and he's like, I'm good now. Those guys are doubting me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we're yeah. still on that division. Lastly, in the AST, let's go to the West. Uh, Chiefs, I'm assuming everybody's taking the Chiefs to win this one, or do we have anybody going crazy? Next next division, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's the Chiefs. Right. Though, although I think Vegas might, might surprise some folks, but they won't win the, the division. Yeah, I mean, who's really the threat there? You got Chargers, Raiders, and Broncos. I remember with Rob a few years ago, that division was kind of, you know, before the Chiefs went on the run, people were picking different teams. with Kansas City chalk there. NFC East, Eagles, uh, Cowboys, Commanders, and Giants. Brandon? Back to the AFC. Yeah, back to the AFC uh, West for a second. I think the Chargers might be like, I think Harbaugh's just a great coach, man. Like, I think he'll figure it out. It's J.K. Dobbins now. Right, they're going to figure something out. So I know, I know they're not going to win the division, but don't be surprised, man, if they're like right there. That's not going to happen. Anyways, back. <laughs> the Chargers are injured. The Chargers get injured every year. Yeah, they, they, yeah, you're right. Exactly right. Uh, NFC East, ah, it's a tough one. I'm going to go Eagles. I'm going to go yeah. Eagles just because I, you know, I saw them, you know, go through a few, you know, go go through adversity last night, and they still, you know, as a team, chemistry, the years they've been together, they're able to pull it off. Saquon in the fold now is incredible. Um, and, yeah, they lose Jason Kelsey, but they get Saquon. And hopefully Saquon can stay healthy. Hopefully Jalen Hurts can stay healthy. Hopefully A.J. Brown doesn't want to storm on and request a trade too early. Devontae Smith is a guy that's still there. They have an electric, electric offense. Uh, it's just on Jalen Hurts. The defense has to figure it out too. Uh, Who's the backup the, there? Do you was, remember just in case he were to go down? Uh, the backup there would be, um, oh my gosh, the quarterback from Greer, two Greer gloves, and Pickett. Two gloves, two Pickett, yeah. Greer and Pickett, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, whatever, I guess. Uh, yeah. When your quarterback was down, you're done anyways. Igor Eagles as well, I'm assuming? Or are you going yeah. Cowboys? No, how about them Cowboys? No way, man, no. The Cowboys got no uh, got no run game. I think the Cowboys are actually going to be worse than they were last year. They were, they were free agency. They were ghosts. We were, they were, they were jokes rolling around like they were sleeping at the helm. He brought back Zeke, who to me looked finished uh, when he was with the Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots yeah. Um, so to me, I, I think the Cowboys have gone like they were the real competition. I think Washington's going to be much better with Daniels. I'm going to be watching that because I think um, with him in there, I think they're going to be a, a steady presence. And the Giants are going to be terrible. I'm taking the Eagles because I think they're just uh, you know top uh, top ahead of everybody. Brandon, how could you think Jane Daniels going to be? I think it'd be good, man. He's a feral body frame right now, and he still has to fill into that and get stronger. But like he, in the RPO game, man, he's really good. I but, but the thing is, RPO game means he's going to take hits, right? That means he's going to run pass option. He's going to take hits. But in college, he's incredible. In in the preseason, he was he was as advertised. He was good. So he's a twenty. I, I think he'll be. I think he'll be good. But like it's, it's it's the same thing. It's like him, Anthony Richardson. I was going to say Richardson's the other guys. Yeah, Richardson's same, a lot same, bigger though. Yeah, they play very similar games, right? Very similar games. Obviously, Anthony Richardson is a bigger guy, but still takes a lot of hits. But Jaden Dennis can can really spin it, man. He's really a good quarterback. Because I remember going into the draft, there was still um, Igor, your quarterback there. Drake May was the second guy, and then there was some late movement the month before where Jaden went uh, went ahead of him. But Drake May was even uh, like first, second talk the whole time. He ends up sliding to the third quarterback take, and that's why I, I don't know ask. why anyone takes. North Carolina quarterback, seriously. Like, you have Sam Howell, you have uh, who else went there? Um, Mitch Trubisky, they're never Mitch, pan out. Yeah. so Drake may like he's not he looks good in preseason, but like, there's never been a UNC quarterback that I'm like, okay, this guy's like good. You don't go to UNC to play quarterback, <laughs> yeah, but apparently, they get them all the time, right? So, anyways, good luck, man. Yeah, NFC South, uh, Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina, uh, Bucks. I'll go first. Um, I know Tampa won it last year, but I, ended, I think everybody's taking Atlanta as well. Um, Tampa Bay is an aging defense, an aging team in general. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, with the Falcons there, Igor. Yeah, I'm going with the, with the Falcons. I think they, you know, with, as long as Kirk can stay healthy, I think they have the best overall team. Uh, and I think Bijan's got a, a chance to be like offensive player of the year. I think he's got, he's got that kind of skill set. Yeah, they should have done more with them last year. But oh, didn't. Arthur Smith yeah. just hated him for some reason. Yeah. It's going to be a it's going to be in a uh, Pittsburgh versus <laughs> Atlanta is a Arthur Smith revenge game because he's the defensive coordinator over there, I think offense coordinator over there. But anyways, Bijan needs to go off. They have so many guys. Cal Pitts, if he doesn't put up this year, he's never going to be good. Atlanta has to win this division. It's like there's no excuses now. They put too many guys in there. They have Jesse Bates. They have, they have all these guys. Offense, defense, they should they should put it together. 
Let's uh, go to the north, uh, Detroit, Chicago, Minnesota, Green Bay. First, before you guys uh, make your – okay, well, Brandon, go ahead. I was going to say, like, another thing for the Atlanta Falcons, they have no excuse. You have two quarterbacks. You have Michael Payton and Penix Jr. as a backup. So you have no excuse not to win that division. That was, that was a wild draft doing that. I mean, oh, but it, yeah, it's smart. You like if you really think about it, it's pick? smart. Huh? Did you like the Penix pick after they signed Cousins? I didn't like it at first, and then I thought about it, and I'm like, it, it's, it's insurance, right? It's like literally last year – 90% of teams had their quarterbacks go out throughout the year, and then they were rest after. You saw Jordan Love just now get one pop, and he's done. These guys are stronger, faster, uh, hit hit a lot harder. Quarterbacks are going to get hurt. You have free Jackson's with Aaron Rodgers. You need an insurance from a, a backup quarterback that you can be confident in. And I think it's 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 something, first of all, it's for their future, but you have that insurance where like you're not gonna fall off. You don't you don't anticipate falling off too much because Michael Penis has all the talent in the world. He's a great arm. He's a little bit older, which means he's more mature. Um, I th- I think now looking back at it, I'm like that's kind of smart. Uh, I, I was gonna before we get on here. There, so there was three teams that kind of shocked me with their picks with the quarterback: got Bo Nix, McCarthy, and Penix. I wasn't sure that any of those guys were like first round grade quarterbacks. I'm not a draft guru or anything, but like I didn't think those guys were anything special. Uh, and apparently the guy who I was lowest on, Bo Nix, has looked the best so far in Denver, which, I mean, we didn't, we, we passed Denver. But what do you think about those three there? Uh, okay. Yeah. So Bo Nix, uh, Michael Penix, and Jake Mason. And uh, McCarthy, who's going to miss the season at Michigan. Oh, McCarthy. Yeah, McCarthy looked good in, in preseason as well, too. He didn't really throw the ball too much in the Harbaugh system in, in Michigan. But I think he can be, be be something, be serviceable, be better than a Sam Darnold. That's not that hard. Yeah. Uh, but when it, <laughs> when it comes to Bo Nix, yeah, Bo Nix is just – he's a gamer, man. He's been good since – he's been starting since he was in the first year in Auburn. And he's had so much – he's had the most experience as a quarterback ever in college football. Um, so I think that translates over in which and Sean Payton is going to find a way to make him get the ball out quick and 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 do well. And he looked really good. He did look really good in the preseason. I think he deserved to be the, the starter there for sure. It doesn't matter what Jared Stim says. <laughs> but, that was but, bad. but That it, was bad optics. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. But I I, I – but I, I think Michael Penix can be a guy you can just plug in whenever. Like he'll he'll be good for a while. So if he doesn't play this year, he'll play he'll play at some point. And I think he man, I just I don't I hated the pick at first, and everyone was like, oh, it's terrible. Then you think it about shocked it. everybody. You already have Bijan. You already Bijan. Right. You have Drake London. You have Kyle Pitts. You have a bunch of these guys on offense that can actually do stuff. There's first no round picks see. all on offense. All on offense. Yeah, yeah. All on you offense. don't see that too often, especially at those positions, especially running back and. Like yeah, yeah. And all first round picks, right? And you have those guys for the long haul, hopefully. So when they're all together and the later on, they already have you don't have to retool. You can now bolster your offensive line now, bolster your defense. So I I didn't mind it, man. I'm probably in the uh, minority. All I'm, right. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there because, like you said, there's just so much skill. Now they have a coach. We'll get to see what he's going to do. But let's go to the north. Uh, Detroit Lions, uh, Chicago Bears, Minnesota Vikings, and the Packers – uh, Igor, make your pick. I know what it is. Uh, it's going to be the, the Detroit Lions. I think they play, I think, 14 uh, games and don't one. Brandon, back to you for the uh, NFC North. Who's your pick? Yeah. <laughs> of course, uh, Igor started this, but I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to roll with the Lions, man. The Lions then pretty much brought back most of their guys, plus Jamison Williams will have a bigger role this year. Amra um, St. Brown is a problem. Um, proving everyone wrong again, and they they got so close the, the last year, and I know they're going to be back with a vengeance. I, I just love their their culture as a team, and the big thing in football is like if your culture is great, you're destined to do good things, right? Uh, I do feel as though the Green Bay Packers will be right there, and the Bears are going to be good too. I don't think they'll, they'll be otherworldly as those other teams. Well, not otherworldly. There's no, no team in this division is otherworldly, but Jordan Love has really found his. If it, hopefully his knees okay. Uh, but that team have they have so many versus you can talk about Wicks, Dobbs, Dobbs. Um, sorry, yeah, Dobbs, Reed, sorry, Reed, yeah, Reed. Of course, you got, of course, you got uh, Christian Watson, you forget about, and they have you know, obviously the running back, too, as well, too. Like they have so many receivers, and so many Musgrave is actually a decent tight end as well, too. So many young guys that they've invested in. And they're doing, they're going to, and they have Allison too. And another, they just have a lot of guys in offense. That they, they and have they talent. Started, yeah, I remember. Even, yeah. And you saw yesterday how open they kind of made the, the entire game. Like the defense could not see your garden. Johnson got absolutely cooked so many times. So I, they're going to be, they're going to be good. But uh, yeah, Detroit, it's Detroit's division to lose. 
Yeah, Jaden Reed, I think, was the guy that had that big play yesterday. And I remember Josh Jacobs yesterday. I mean, Josh Jacobs has always been one of my favorite running backs there because he's very consistent because with the Raiders, he didn't get that kind of, I guess, uh, attention. But I always liked him. They were on him at the beginning of, this, the, beginning of the game because he wasn't doing too well. He had a nice run towards the end of the year, to the end of the game. But um, Malik Willis there as the backup, ex-Titan. I mean, we might be seeing him next week. We need to find out what's going on with Jordan Love too, right? Hopefully, I mean, everything's just a sprain or something like that. I mean, he's not untouched. So hopefully, it's a sprain. But... Uh, Igor, sorry, I know we got cut off the last time. I know you made the pick of the line to get into it and finish up with them. Yeah, like I said, uh, they're uh, 14 games in domes. They, they play very well in dome structures. That's where golf really goes off. They have the best, uh, I think, overall talent. And I think right now, you know, crazy enough, uh, one of the trending Super Bowl picks is that, that folks do believe uh, that the Lions can get there. Um, again, I think that, you know, I still have San Francisco a, a little a bit higher. But like I said, they, they do have all the talent. I think for the first time in a long time, and I know Brandon with his Matt Nagy hate and whatever, the Bears have been a, a dumpster fire for years. But, man, that, that is a nice offense they got going. As long as Caleb uh, Williams comes as advertised, uh, with Swift coming in there at running back, you got Keenan Allen, you got Moore, um, the other guy. Uh, Odunze. Odunze. That is a nice offense they got going, and they are going to be uh, a solid team to watch. I don't know if they make the playoffs, but – I think they're gonna they're, they're gonna be you know right there maybe five hundred slightly above but it's gonna be that's that's it's turning into a hell of a division um, and like I said I think that the Vikings might actually just end up last now the one thing I think I the Vikings will Packers, be last yeah the one thing I want to talk about the Packers and what I didn't understand is um, the whole Jacobs to Jones situation personally I thought that was a downgrade I I know that Jones is a little bit older for like like three years older but man he had a great playoff. Where he he just like smoked the, the Cowboys and when they signed Jacobs and they cut him, I was supremely surprised by that. Um, I like Jacobs. I, I think he's a, he's a good player, but I think Jones just brings more to the offense. I don't know if again it's because he's twenty nine and maybe maybe think they think he's a little bit more run down. I thought that was actually a downgrade for the Packers. Yeah, I, agree. I guess they're trying to save money after they paid their quarterback too, right? Like Jones and Dylan were there for so long, and I like both of them. And obviously, Dylan's gonna—I don't know if he's gonna miss a season; he has a neck injury. But like he both, like they had a really good one-two punch there, running back that I liked for a long time. But I agree. I mean, it must have been a cost-cutting move. I don't know why else they would have done. Well, it. I mean, they, but they gave, but they gave uh, forty-eight James million for four years, years, I think. think. Yes, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I, he I left. Know. He wanted more touches. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Where'd one thing with Aaron point? Jones is that, like, every year it was in, inevitable he would get injured sometime. Yeah, like, every year, true, right? Yeah. But he was good when he's in. When he's in there, he's like producing all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Josh Jacobs, I think, in in, in he's a workhorse. Other will be good. One thing about the can I say one thing about the Chicago Bears? Yes, they look great on paper right now. Uh, all the receivers in the world, the best. They, they've never had a quarterback throw for over five thousand yards, which is like crazy. It's a 4, I don't know the last one that threw for 4,000. Like, who would have yeah. <laughs> Oh, they've never had someone that they throw. don't have a quarterback ever. <laughs> I don't know if they have five, but anyways, 4,000 yards. But in the cold, remember, Caleb Williams is a, is a California, California yeah. he's always played in, in warmer climates in Oklahoma and USC. I don't know how he's going to do in the cold, man. I don't know. He's, I think he looks with his nails and everything that that's a dome quarterback at uh, at best, right? So, who, who knows? Finger painted I, do, nails? I do believe him, though. I do believe oh, in him. Man. Did he paint his nails? Is he one of those guys? He, he's one of his mom. Like he literally, he said it in hard knocks. He's like my his mom. Anyways, he, pretty much like he always gets his nail. He had, puts like messages on his nails. He's like, yeah, I, I like to get my nails. I have a pink pink phone case. Like his, I guess his girlfriend's okay. Igor, don't tell Lamar. New gen, I tell you, new generation. New generation, Lamar, just it just. They're, I shouldn't say cooked, but uh, what, what? How much shade was just thrown at, at old Rex Grossman that got him to the Super Bowl? I, I mean, he was he wasn't very good, but back in old old three. <laughs> still got it done, man. They had Devin Hester and those guys, right? Oh, right. can I ask you guys about the uh, the new? I think Igor and I were talking about this. The kickoff rule. The kickoff rule, man. Hey, so I don't like kickoff that. rule. It was meant to bring back, you know, uh, some action where they have to, you know, they have to they have to return the ball when there were no returns. Yeah. But every game thus far, I don't think I've seen one return. We've had how many games now? Two games. In sure. both games, there were no no returns. So yeah. I, I do I do think that if a guy gets it, he will be able to break it and, and go. But I haven't seen one return. It's, it's been touchback. So really and truly, you got to think about it. They got to really think like, hey, they're not going to get rid of special teams, get rid of the kickoff, but it's it doesn't matter how you have it. 
you're gonna you're gonna kick into the end zone. Yeah, it's a, you're gonna it's, put yeah. the team. It's a front. jog. It's a jog and cut to a commercial. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, like you're gonna get the it's, it's kick into the thirty. Have the team work their way from the thirty all the way through. That's gonna be how it's gonna be. And and I, and I know they're like, oh, it's gonna be. They want it to be fifty percent now. I'm like, no, that's, that's BS. They are not gonna get returns this year. I'm telling you right now. So yeah. I, I thought it was a little gimmicky in the when I first saw it in the preseason and so forth. But so how does it how does it work if a team wants to try an onside? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know. Can you onside kick? Yeah, is that is that? Is, oh, do you have to? I mean, does the other team have to know? And then, because that was the whole point of trying to get I, him like. Yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to speak about because I don't know about that. I, I, don't I was trying to look into. I've that. heard stuff. I don't even know if you can on side kick or what the rules are. I mean, I guess we'll find out soon and we'll look into it. But yeah, I don't. I don't love the kickoff rule, anyways. I know they're trying to like limit injuries and all that kind of stuff, but at the same time, like, it's not. It's not the same as it, as it was, especially when we were growing up. Um, but anyways, I'll uh, get into our last division. I'm going to go chalk two with Detroit. The only thing I was going to say, guys, quickly, you guys will remember this, um, good times, but remember a few years ago when Campbell and Sirianni got hired and we were ripping them both saying that both these guys are like way too emotional for the game. Dan Campbell's crying every time I'm seeing him. I love you guys. And I, I don't know, like, what else, I don't know whether to run through a wall and a laugh at my head coach if that's the case. There's a clip that I posted on, on the page there, but your guys' thoughts on both. I know that Sirianni won he, he won the Super Bowl right away, and now he's been on the hot seat because I talk with Hurts. Your thoughts on both those coaches. Uh, Brandon, let's go to you first. Yeah, I was going to say, like, okay, Siri, I'll start with Sirianni. Sirianni, obviously, you know, he doesn't not the best in front of a, in front of a microphone, but uh, he, he – right, and then he's – he tried to make some calls, and some guys question his, uh, his intelligence when it comes to the game, but he put Kellen more – like, he's made great – of course, yep. you had Steichen, um, and of course, you have the guy that's at the Colts right now. Um, I think that's Shane, Shane Steichen. Of course, a guy that went to Arizona as well, too. But this year, you have Kellen Moore, right? And you got an, a really good, another really good uh, hire, of course, on defense. Like, he did a good job with the offense because the offense was – the offensive play call in last year for the Eagles was a high school level kind of offense. It was awful. If you remember that game they played against the Arizona Cardinals, it was awful. Um, he did win. You no, know, initially they did. They did win that one. Um, that one Super Bowl. Um, but at the same, but at the same time, I I just think time will tell. He will. He'll be good with this team because he has a lot of guys in his team. The defense is bolstered with a bunch of Bull, Georgia Bulldogs, so they'll be good. Um, I think Dan Campbell's a good coach, man. I, I know he goes for it. He's really aggressive. Um, I listen in to a lot of the the stuff he says to his team. He's really aggressive, and that's just who he is. His his. Identity is exactly how the team follows up, right? Who knows how long that will last, but it's working right now. And you can go back to the Dallas game last year with him, him not wanting to kick, being really stubborn, not wanting to kick the field goal. Sorry, yep. the extra point or whatever it's called. And you can go to many different situations. Even in the San Francisco game, they should have won. They should have been. To, they should have won, won that game. They should have won that game. That was that was a massive collapse. Yeah, Massive collapse. They, they should have won that game, right? They should have. So And San uh, Fran should have lost to Green Bay too, but we'll talk about that at a different time. That was the two close games there. Yeah, but I think I think Dan Campbell's a good coach. Uh, Sirianni yeah. still left. I don't know, know too much about Sirianni. I think he just has great coordinators, but I think Dan Campbell's a good coach. Yeah, Gannon and, and, and Steichen were the two guys where they had that they both lost after they won the Super Bowl. So it is tough when you're like, remember the Pats used to go through that all the time, Igor. Remember they had all those guys, whether it was, um, who was the Italian guy they had? They, they lost coordinators left, right, and center, yeah, even from the guys that Romeo, went back to the... yeah. Romeo Cornell, Josh McDaniels, all, the, all those guys tended to come and go here and there. And yeah, then, there, was, uh, there was so many of them. Yeah, yeah, the guy that got hired to coach the Lions, um, he was like a I forget his it's forgetting his name, but he was actually not even uh an NFL guy, he was like a scientist. That's what he, I was saying. He's he's he got running the Italian players. last name, yeah. Damn, I'm drawing yeah, a blank on him. But the point is, like when you have such great coordinators, they don't last very long on your team before other teams come and poach them, right? Um, and then after that, they're kind of I mean, then you're always kind of retooling there. But yeah, I want to talk about Campbell and Syrian. I remember Kiri, um, Campbell said he was kind of live by the sword, die by the sword. We're going after it all in those fourth downs all the time because the analytics or whatever. But See, the funny thing about those two is like, they're to, to me, they're Patricia was the coach. They're still, the both, they're still both on the hot seat and, and they've had some success. But for example, like you can, you can legitimately say that Campbell's stubbornness last year cost him the game against the 49ers because he was just, you know, doing things that didn't make a lot of sense. And he cost them the game. And yes, you know, he's, he's a player's coach. He practices with them. He does all sorts of things. But if, if that continues, there's only so much that the organization, because the organization's got some nice pieces. Um, and I think the same thing for Sirianni. If Sirianni doesn't produce or, or get them to where they need to be, like Sirianni will be fired. 
Like if, if the Eagles don't like if the Eagles melt he'll be there for the season. Again, yeah, he'll be yeah, there for the Eagles season. Eagles melt down the way they, they did again um last year, he will be fired. And and Campbell, I don't think he'll like if let's say the Lions like don't reach a Super Bowl, will he be fired? But if I, th- I think if he continues to like make decisions, if he makes a bad decision, games, yeah. Like he'll be on the hot seat sooner rather than later. It doesn't matter how good of a personality or a, a player's coach he is, because the fans will call for his head eventually because they'll get tired of the, sh- of the shtick of yeah. the of craziness. No, I agree. I would say that I know we said like Sirianna won a Super Bowl. He never won a Super Bowl. He went to the Super Bowl, uh, you know, against the uh, the Chiefs in this By first mistake. Season. The Chiefs, yeah, he yeah, lost, Chiefs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. win. I think after that, they're like, okay, well, the team he got them there, so he, you can't get rid of him. The second, like last year was. A performance by a coach where you literally most coaches would get fired, but even they yeah. go to the Super Bowl of the year before, he probably would have got you know probably axed. It was so bad, but yeah, he still he still has to prove it. And I think Dan, K, I, I agree with Igor. It's like if the stick continues with Dan Campbell and they don't produce, it's gonna be tough. And the best path that they that the Detroit Lions had to the Super Bowl was last year. It was last year, and they would have given the, the Chiefs like a really good run for their money, man. Trust me. Because remember, Jerry Goss already been to the to the Super Bowl before, right? With the Rams, yeah. I, the, I I thought if the Lions beat the 49ers as they should have last year, they would have won the Super Bowl. And I know it's hard; that's crazy to say, but I think they were going to win it. I think so too. Ten and one last year, by the way, uh, Eagles Physical. before they ended up losing all those games and finished. I think it was eleven and six. Um, but yes, yeah, to start off ten and one and have that collapse that they did, not good. Um, yeah, Lions. I mean, man, like I was last year would have been beautiful. Obviously, if the Lions and the Bills would have made it there as you know two border cities to Canada. Um, I mean, but the Lions are everybody's kind of Super Bowl darling this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, I guess we're all there on uh, on Detroit last division. Um, NFC West, uh, Cardinals, Rams, Seahawks, 49ers. I mean, 49ers obviously could be everybody's pick, but I think every team in this division is training upwards. Uh, Brandon, we'll go to you. Hey, I don't know if they're training upwards, man. Like, right? I, I don't <laughs> think the, the Arizona Cardinals are trying. I don't know if I said I said really? I don't think they can be worse than last year. I was going to yeah, say. Last year, they were so bad. Yeah. yeah but, but they, they got Harrison right. Jr. in there. I think at least the offense is going to be nice. Yeah, you got that. But Kyler Murray's never stayed healthy. And they have to, they're saying, like, I don't think they'll win eight games. I think they'll be under under five hundred. I don't think they'll win eight games, man. It'll be they have a really tough division. Defense is still, I you know, still a question too. They still have Buda Baker. They haven't really bolstered their defense as much as a you know Atlanta Falcons or you know other teams as well too. You do have some firepower with Marvin Harrison Jr. and of course Wilson on the outside, but Kyler Murray has never been able to stay healthy all year. He hasn't, and he hopefully this year he does, and they they can continue, but. I, I hate to get on the guy for you know having the ACL tear because like it's it's not it's not fortunate and I, I've had it in Achilles. I know how unfortunate it's so un, it's so unexpected, but it it will be tough, man. It, like oh, the only thing you can say is and James Conner's really he's older too. He's older than Aaron Jones, or Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs. We're talking about older older running backs, so they're not getting. I I think they're I love Marvin Harrison O H always, but yeah, see this the in the 49ers, man, 49ers going to the Super Bowl. Now is it two years in a row? The Super Gremlins. The Super Gremlins going. To the <laughs> I'm trying to think who the Chiefs. No, the Chiefs beat the Eagles one year. The Chiefs have so they've been to three in a row. They beat obviously Philly and um, and the 49ers. I'm trying to think of who the other. They beat the 49ers twice. Yeah. yeah. Well, Eagles. Eagles was the year before. So it was 49ers. Eagles. 49ers. Then. Well, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. So there you yeah. go. So Shanahan getting there as much as he did, you know how demoralizing that is? And he has to go through the entire year again. Um, they have the guys. Hopefully Debo can and these guys can CMC can stay healthy. No, it wasn't the 49. It wasn't the 49. Remember, the, remember the Chiefs lost to the Bucks. The Bucks shot Brady. lost to the Bucks. Lost to the Bucks. So, sorry, have the Chiefs been to four in a row and won two? Is that it? If, or is yeah, it four Brady, or five? Brady, I think they've won. I think they, they've been to three out of the last, uh, I would say. Three yeah, of the last four. Three of the last no, four. No, because they did uh, – the bang did the Bengals make one? Yeah, Bengals played the uh the Rams. So that was the Bengals one. Played the Rams. Yeah, the Bengals were the only team that beat the Chiefs. And the year before, well, of course, uh, it was uh I think that and you can think about the, the Chiefs. I forget what year the Brady year, but they, they they lost to Brady in the Super Bowl. I just pulled it year. up now. I just pulled it up now, I'll read it off for you guys. So Chiefs 49ers last year, Chiefs Eagles the year before, Rams, Bengals, Tampa Chiefs, yeah. Chiefs 49ers. And then before that, the Patriots. So Kansas City has been to four of the last five Super Bowls and won two of them. Yeah, three. Oh, it's yeah, two of them. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm for, I'm foreshadowing. 
But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, they beat the 49ers twice. 2019 was the other one. That one was in Miami. Yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo, that. right? Yeah, but yeah, just, Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah. I'm not I'm not talking speaking about the player, but Debo was there. I think Kittle was there as well, too. The last time they went the, the two they went. But the Shanahan getting getting to the big game and not being able to put it together, um, not being able to finish. It's just so demor- I know they're getting paid a ton of money. And doing it, but the, the ultimate goal is you want to get that. And this, these guys are like the, the Utah Jazz, getting there but never able to, you know, get over the hump, right? Um, but yeah, those it's the 49ers, I think entire conference to lose, really and truly, if you really think about it, it's really theirs. They, they're the ones they're defending, you know, NFC champions. So hopefully, Eagles and the Lions. Is it safe to say those are their only real threats? If you really think, well, yeah, you'll have some surprises there, but that is those are the only, yeah, that's it, that's it. Mm-hmm. Lions, Eagles. Yeah, Cowboys if they can show up as well too. The Rams yeah. might be better. Like Matt Stafford's, you know, talking a lot. In the I league. think the Rams are going to be solid. Yeah, yeah I slept Rams, on them last year, but I think yeah. they're going to be pretty they're, good. They got their yeah. defense to be a lot better. They put some money into that. Um, Kyron Williams is supposed to be a lot better. Puka the cool. Cooper Cup's back. Like Matt Stafford's good too. Like he, the, the, as long as he's healthy. I mean, his body's broken, but if he can stay on the field, they got a shot. And they got a shot exactly right. But it's going to be the Niners. I think it's going to be the Niners again. Igor Niners. I'm rolling with the Gremlins. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a while. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and, and, is in that division. <laughs> I was just saying, Brandon Ayuk's the guy. I remember I talked about him a few years ago. I was pretty high on him. I didn't expect this, but he's. I mean, Debo Samuel has become pretty much an afterthought on that. Well, for whatever it's worth, I mean, it was always Debo was the guy there, and then now, like, I guess Ayuk had that few seasons there. But when he came in there, that I remember he was struggling to get touches for. I mean, the first few years there, I remember he's even going down to their third guy. But the thing I was going to say about the Forty Nineers, man, as we talk about this in sports all the time, is just. When you're there for so long, it's tough to keep guys under contract, guys that get older, especially in football. It's tough to bring back that same team all the time, even if on paper it is the same team. So Trent Williams is holding out. He's back in it. But, I mean, all these guys, like I said, just a year older, more demoralizing, a lot of playoff games on their resume. It's going to be tough. And teams like this just kind of fall off. So, I mean, they're not going anywhere. Let's make that clear. But, I mean, they're not the fresh team they were a few years ago, I think. Yeah. No, totally. Totally, man. I, and. You can go down the list, like even CMC. Like, was he going to have the same production he had last? That's what year? I mean. Yeah, and he's been broken for so long. He put together a few healthy years, but I mean, w- would anybody be shocked if he gets hurt again? Yeah, no. And, and, and just... one thing they'll they'll be riding with is Ricky Pearsall got shot in the chest, and he still beat that I guy. I couldn't believe that man. First round, pick, many men, yeah. many men's going to be playing as soon as they start. <laughs> they happen. They come out to that, and, and, and... <laughs> we need a separate podcast. Been playing for in five this. weeks, man. Like I said they've been playing. This guy got shot. He be playing in five weeks. That's crazy. He's building the chest. Team. So that team's going to be inspired, man. Yeah. I going to say, we need a podcast on the uh, on the state of, uh, of of the city of San Francisco because it's not <laughs> doing too good, man. It is not. When the players are not safe and they're getting robbed. But, all right, it's going to wrap it up for that. I just want to get into our picks. I'm going to make some notes. Um, Igor, I'm not sure if you have your five, if you want to go first. Yeah, uh, I'll go with, with my five. First and foremost, I'm going to go with um, – I'm going to go with the Bengals, uh, minus seven and a half against the, uh, the Patriots. I'm a little concerned about this pick now because I, I didn't make it a little bit early in the week just because Higgins looks like he's not going to play Chase, his contract situation. I don't know what it's going to be, but I think if the Patriots are going to win any games um, this year, it's going to be home games. Um, the defense is solid. I uh, like Gonzo and, and a few of the other guys, but I, I especially with like how the offense is, is meshing and so forth. I think that'll be a 10 point bangle win bar minimum. So I'm going to take that. Uh, second game, I am uh, going to go with the Texans, minus three over the Colts. Um, the reason for this is, again, I think the Texans are solid. Richardson, as we mentioned, like Brandon has him up in the club throwing up money. Um, I didn't I didn't know that, and now I'm a little more confident. That, but he hasn't really played – he didn't play in the preseason. He hasn't played football in almost a year. Um, I think that is going to take some time, and I think the, that high-power Texans offense um, is going to win that game by a touchdown. So I'm going to take that uh, them. Uh, third, I like the Browns, uh, two and a half over the Cowboys. Uh, the Cowboys do not travel well. Um, I think the Cowboys aren't w- what they were last year. I have issues with their running game. Um, and again, Cleveland just solid at home, um, covered the spread all six times last year at home um, by a field goal. I think I think that's solid. Uh, I like the Lions, uh, four and a half against the Rams. I personally think the Rams, uh, without Aaron Donald, aren't great on defense. And it's I think that's going to be a shootout. And, but I think the Lions are just going to have too much um, for them there. And lastly, and this one stings, I'm going to have to go with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets on in the Monday nighter to cover the four and a half because 
McCaffrey's been injured all preseason, hasn't played. Ayuk hasn't gotten any snaps. Trent Williams hasn't gotten any snaps. It's a nice place for the Jets. I don't think they win the game, but I think they do enough to keep it close and cover the four and a half. That's a bold prediction, man. That's tough. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what it's all about out here and on the block. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked, man. I think the Jets can. That Monday nighter is going to be really good. I think if, when the season's like coming to the end, both those teams are going to be like 10, 11, 12 win teams. I think that that's going to be a good game. I wouldn't be shocked if the Jets, honestly, this is a good spot for them to actually pounce and get and steal a game. I know it's on the road and everything, but like you said, a lot of their key guys have just missed time, whether it's been lockouts with two of the guys or just injuries. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if they drop a game, but I like the spread there a lot. Brandon? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bengals, cover seven and a half. Like, even if they don't have their main guys, I think Burrow just cannot lose. The Patriots already took them in Survivor, so there's no excuses there. If you don't, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna go crazy. I'm going to take the uh, Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I know uh, right now there's a report saying that Russell Wilson has a calf strain, so Justin Fields will have to go up there. He's going to be home in Atlanta. He's from Atlanta, but I, I just see, see that the Kirk Cousins and these guys just put it together. And and show Atlanta, you know, really what they were about. Uh, Pittsburgh, I, I just think they have so many questions um, on on every level to the point where Mike Tomlin might even be in the hot seat, right? Even though he's won everywhere he's gone, but he might be in the hot seat for for us. So I'll take the Atlanta Falcons. I'm gonna take this is something. It's gonna be a pretty much a reach. The New York Giants, New York Giants at home to to cover the spread, <laughs> not cover the spread, but to be uh, to be, um, you know, underdogs and to win. Right there, uh, the upset over the Minnesota Vikings. I can't believe I'm saying the Minnesota Vikings are upset, but uh, Minnesota Vikings are favored by one and a half. I think the Vikings, sorry, I think the Giants actually at home. Okay, you've had a terrible preseason, you've been the laughing stock of the league, Daniel Jones. This is your opportunity to shut the haters up. You're playing a, a team that's lost a lot. You know, Sam Darnold starting, Sam Darnold starting probably. It's, who knows if it's going to be cold out there? I think Daniel Jones has to show you know, why, you know what he can do with Malik Neighbors. Um, don't really know too much about what they have on the, on the ground. I don't think they'll be that great, but I think Dable cannot lose against the Vikings. You can, you have to beat the Vikings. Okay, so I'm going to take them in the upset. Uh, I do have the Colts. I have the Colts, too. Three-point favors on the road in, in Indianapolis. I think the Colts – sorry, not the Colts, sorry. The Houston Texans. My gosh, why would I ever do that? So I was just talking about Anthony Richardson going off. <laughs> but I'm going to take the Houston Texans to, to cover the spread um, there and win by at least a touch, at least by at least by 10 points. I'm going to take that by at least 10 points for sure. My third pick right there. Uh, going down list, I I really wanted to take the Cowboys in in uh, in Cleveland. And I will. I will. I will take I will take the Dallas Cowboys. Because I Dallas. think the circuits that's been around, the circuits that's happened in Dallas with Jerry Jones, not really doing much of free agency, always talking trash about certain guys, saying he's the best that can do the job. These boys gotta understand if they lose this game and to start to start off on the wrong foot, it's gonna be a tough pill to swallow and it'll be just a media circus. So I'm I think Dak Prescott, those boys, C Lamb got paid. Go out there and show that uh that massage loving quarterback that you know you guys can do what you can. <laughs> so that's definitely what I'm gonna take. And I'll take the Detroit Lions at home. I think the Detroit Lions, once again, the Rams are gonna come into that, to that uh to Ford Ford Field really feeling really, you know, wanting some revenge. But I just think Detroit, Detroit had every game sold out. Jared Goff and these guys, every game was sold out. They were they're in they're on a revenge tour. They have to beat the the Rams again and it's Jared Goff revenge, revenge game as well too sent them home uh now send them home again send them home again so I think uh, Jared Goff would be two nothing Jared Goff versus Sean McVay ballsy um I'll get into mine here so I mean I'm kind of going against you guys on a lot of these picks there um, <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Arizona Cardinals plus six and a half I think I mean I think the Bills are gonna have an adjustment period there I'd be shocked if they lose the game especially because it's at home but I think the Cardinals kind of keep this close um within a touchdown there at six and a half so I'll take them there I love Indy plus three and I'll tell you why because I feel like everybody that's betting this game is taking Houston and they're going off of one year and of, of course it was a really good season for them even towards the end of the I don't think anybody had them winning even a playoff game I'm going to take Indy at home with a healthy answer to Anthony Richardson. I think that they actually win this game outright. Um, now, two four and a half spreads. I love the dogs. I love the Rams plus four and a half. I think that, I mean, I got burned by the Rams last year. I think that they're better this year than they were last year. Cooper Cup's going to be playing. That's a positive there. A lot of hype on Detroit, um, but the game's got to be played on the field. Detroit probably still wins. I'll take four and a half. I love the Jets plus four and a half. Um, I'm going to take them. And then my last pick, I struggled with it. 
but I'm going to go with the Brownies to minus two and a half. I don't want to. I got the R. Kelly. My mind's telling me yes, but whatever it's telling me no. Hey, Deshaun said the same thing. <laughs> he did. It's a common thing <laughs> in this game. Um, Cleveland minus two and a half. I don't love it. I mean, I kind of want to change the pick, but I'll leave it. I have four dogs there before. I need a favorite. I was saying that before. I don't like a lot of favorites in this uh, this week one, um, but some of them are going to cover. And then I'm going to go over Rob's picks that he made. So we had Baltimore plus two and a half. Didn't hit. Uh, Philly plus two and a half. Didn't hit. Uh, Denver plus five and a half he has. That's going to be a good game in Seattle. Um, I want to see him kind of, you know, Seattle has a new head coach. I want to see what happens there. Uh, Pittsburgh plus three and a half. They usually keep every game within a field goal, and he has the Bucks minus three and a half there. So you say the Philadelphia Eagles plus two and a half? Yeah, he, he had both those. I think they were both two and a half spreads. He took both the dogs on the Thursday and the Friday. Um, didn't the, 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 didn't the Eagles thing hit? Tough. Yeah, they won 34-29. My mistake. I, for some reason, I thought that it was Green Bay, but he did write down Philly. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he, he did, did hit that. that. Rob, yeah, I got Philly you, Philly minus the two and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so he's one and one so far. <laughs> what did he over to? <laughs> Before we yeah. wrap up, guys, uh, any last thoughts there? Uh, I mean, I actually, it just popped into my head because I, I, I so maybe ended on a little bit of a funny situation. I think there's already been like the fumble of the season. Because I know Brandon was talking about the Giants and Daniel Jones. So I don't know if you guys heard about this, but I think he's dating that uh, that Kay Adams. Uh, I, I, I looked into it. It's not true. She just it's not true? It. No. no, that, no, no. I'm, I'm hearing different things. Because I'm like, the way that she she talks to Sham uh, Sharma, like she's just throwing out there that she wants to date him. And that man is not taking any of the bait. And if she, ends up, if she ended up dating Daniel Jones, I'm like, Shams, that is the fumble of the season already. Because she was just literally letting it have it, pal. Like she wants to go I out mean, of Go on I mean, there's a few options. There's a few options there. One of them is he might not like the ladies, right? Like, I mean, that's a possibility. Too, right? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think about that. that. But like... New generation, man. Probably gets the nails. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Oh, boy. Uh, but he but might yeah, not. No, I mean, no, I've I, I, that down. I've seen those clips. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think it's the, I, I'm a man. There's something about the NFL season, man. Every year, it just, you just hope. Every team it. has hope. Every team has a new hope. Yeah, every like the first week, the week zero, week one, it's always so tough, man. It's so tough, but I, I'm excited for football. I can't wait to hear Hanson's new, you know, ready for 12 hours of uninterrupted football. I can't wait to hear that. Um, yeah, something about the NFL season is just great, man. It's like part of life. It's bittersweet they're back in school, you know, as teachers, but at the same time, it's good to have football season back. On Sundays, yeah. All right, boys, um, I'm going to post that up today. Uh, good luck to everybody with their bets, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good week one. There you go. Have a good one.